This family day schedule is very strange. The Vancouver Canucks played their game off at 11 a.m. PST, which kind of jumbles up my entire video making schedule for the day. But part of what makes this schedule fine is the fact that the Montreal Canadiens do not play, which means it's pretty convenient in trying to schedule Montreal Canadiens related content. And I was going through just a few notes on the Canadians, what they've been up to lately, and just things that I think are interesting to talk about. And I ended up stumbling upon a few comments made about or by forward Yuri Slavkovsky. And of course, we know that Slav has been a pretty big topic the past few weeks, not necessarily because he's a big guy, but because he's been a big time player. And this has been a pretty good transformation for the guy from a few months ago up until today. We've said this a thousand times already, but he was supposed to be sent down to Laval. He was going to be sent down. Marty St. Louis stepped in there a few months ago and was like, no, don't send this guy down. Keep him up. We'll work with him. We'll make him better. And that's exactly what has happened. Because Slav now has eight points in his last five games and 13 points in his last 10. And he's now up to a point production pace of about 45 over the span of the full 82 game year. He's got 30 points in 55 games. Of course, this projection incorporates the first half's worth of the season, wherein Slavkovsky was not really producing all too much. But now he's been such an impact player that as a top line guy with the Caulfields and Suzuki's of the world, it's been such an incredible progression and he's been night and day compared to before. Now, when it comes to Slavkovsky's overall perspective, this is the quote that seems to have made the rounds on social media after the Washington Capitals game, wherein the Canadians lost in regulation. They were not able to tie things up and get it to overtime. Slavkovsky had some chances, but ultimately the game ended off with the Washington win. Tomorrow is another day, and I'm going to push myself again. Slavkovsky said after the loss to the Capitals, because I really believe I can be a difference player. Difference player? Difference maker. Eh, I don't know, you kind of get what he means, right? But when it comes to Slavkovsky, not only are you seeing the progression in the on-ice skills, but you're also seeing the progression on the confidence. And this quote kind of epitomizes everything that's been going on. Not only is Slavkovsky talking the talk, but he's also walking the walk because he's playing, as of late, like a guy who feels like he can be a difference maker. Last year, it was more so of a treading water kind of year, you know? He was just trying to go out there and survive, not really get hit as much as he did. It didn't work because he did get hit a lot. He had his head down for a lot of plays. He was getting plummeted by guys who were half his size, like Marco Rossi, for example, of the Minnesota Wild. Wasn't really a great rookie year, but as an 18-year-old, what are you going to do? It's a learning experience for a guy who was a first overall talent and... Realistically, seeing the comparison between then and now, it bodes very well for what we're going to be able to see in the next few years. You know, you talk about the bell curve, you talk about the function of E and how sometimes, you know, when people are going through the growth stages, they experience significant growth quickly early on. This could be it. The growth from year one to year two has been so significant, heck, even from the first half of the year to now, that a quote like this from Slavkovsky pretty much epitomizes everything that we have been seeing. Now, furthermore to quotes about Slavkovsky, we had ourselves Montreal Canadiens captain Nick Suzuki also stepping up and saying some pretty interesting things. This is what he said in an article on The Athletic. This was posted onto the Arhab sub, so I am willing to screenshot it and put it on the screen. Slavkovsky is a great playmaker, Suzuki said last week. Everyone's telling him to shoot, and I'm telling him to make plays. He can't just be set on one thing. Huh, tell that to Austin Matthews, why don't you? You have to be open to any option, and I think he's been doing a really good job of that lately. People, media, they're all telling him he should shoot more. I mean, he's got a great shot, and we all love it when he shoots, but you want to make the right play. And I'll say this right away, when it comes to taking shots and making plays, it's tough to take shots when Mike Matheson is never passing it to you in the power play. Just a quick note that I think needs to be pointed out, but... For Mike Matheson, passing it to Slavkovsky once in a while, the odd time that he does go out there and take a one-time bomb, it usually looks pretty good. And he scores in these sometimes too, so we recognize that the shot does exist, we recognize that sometimes it takes a while for him to get the pass, but his hockey 
brain and just the way he perceives creating plays is also pretty good too. And we've been seeing that with all the point production he's had the past few weeks here. Of course, playing with Caulfield and Suzuki helps out, but this was supposed to be the plan after all, right? Everybody kind of thought there was some sort of a Slav Kof Suzuki line that was going to be manifested. We had made the video about this back when he was drafted. Suzuki, Caulfield, Slavkovsky, the Slavkovsky line. And that is starting to form pretty significant NHL results, even if it's only been the first year of them being together. Now, finally, to end off this video, I wanted to go over one more comment made by a Montreal Canadian in regards to Slavkovsky. This is what Kirby Doc had to say. There's a video segment on the RHAB sub of Doc talking about how he relates to Uri Slavkovsky. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to it yourself. But Kirby essentially says in the video that he sees a lot of himself in Uri Slavkovsky. Big guy, top round pick. Lots of expectations, and Kirby even talks about how, hey, you could debate maybe he was rushed into the NHL, maybe the Canadians shouldn't have put Slavkovsky in that spot right away, you could debate that, but now he's looking really good. And Doc said something really interesting in the video, he said that there's a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations for sure, but the most important thing is that the biggest expectations, they always come from yourself. It's not from the fans, not from the media, not from your coaches, not from your management, not from anybody outside, but the biggest expectations come from within. And Doc said he kind of related to Slavkovsky and how you're this big guy taken maybe too early in the draft, maybe put too early into the NHL, and you just want to go out there and prove everybody right. Not Shane Wright, but you want to prove to everybody that their expectations for you are valid and that you can live up to it. And how early on in someone's career they may not be able to do that right away. I can't speak too much for Kirby Doc because I think his rookie season was okay, but Yuri Slavkovsky had a lot of disappointment in the first season's worth of play, and a lot of people would be quick to point out that you could say he should have spent some more time either in Europe or go over to Laval or whatever, this and that. We were having that conversation every few weeks on this YouTube channel, and a lot of people were getting pretty riled up in the comments. Oh, he's just getting used to it, be a little bit more patient. Oh no, he was a bust, they should have taken right, like whatever, whatever. There's a lot of conversations that have been going on about Slavkovsky the past few years, but at the end of the day, you know, and I say at the end of the day, I mean at the end of... January in the middle of February, we are here saying that Slav is an NHL guy. We know that for sure. And the rest of the Canadians' teammates around him are giving a lot of support, giving a lot of praise. What are your thoughts about the comments that Slavkovsky made himself, that he feels that he can be a difference maker at this NHL level, and the idea that the biggest expectations come from within? What are your thoughts on the comparison between Doc and Slavkovsky, and how well do you think this entire pairing is going to go? Let's say one day the Canadians put Doc, who is hopefully healthy, with Slavkovsky on a line or on a power play. What do you think these two big dudes could accomplish together if that were to ever manifest itself? Also, what are your thoughts on Nick Suzuki's comments, wherein he said that Slavkovsky's playmaking is underrated, his shot's great, but he's a great passer. If you had to quantify it, what do you think is Slavkovsky's biggest strength at this point? Is it his willingness to adapt and overcome? Is it his playmaking? Is it the immediate growth? Is it his size, his skill, his intangibles? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.